Memorial Day is kind of a contradictory holiday in the United States. On the one hand, it's a federal holiday uh, memorializing and honoring the soldiers of the U.S. who died in combat. On the other hand, for many people, it's the beginning of summer. For U.S. postal history collectors, they're much more likely to think about the Civil War because that's when the holiday got its start. So during the first few weeks of the Civil War, the U.S. actually continued to carry to and from the North and South. But after a while, that service halted and the Confederate States had to take over their own postal system. One thing the U.S. did almost immediately was demonetize all of their postage stamps that were currently in circulation, and then the U.S. issued brand new stamps. The Confederate States also issued their own stamps. The South ended up being very low on paper and other supplies, which brings us to an area of civil war collecting called adversity covers. These are covers that people in the South would make out of anything they could find, whether that was reusing old letters, old envelopes, or even wallpaper. Even though postal services between the North and South had ended, letter writing between the North and South did not. Of course, this makes sense because it wasn't like a clean split. There were families and friends on both sides of the border. One of the more challenging areas is looking at this material that crossed the border and figuring out how it did that. There's a thing called flag of truce correspondence. There's also prisoner of war exchange letters, patriotic covers. These are a lot more common from the Union because there were a lot of printers so these would be covers with patriotic images, maybe cartoons, flags, Lady Liberty. You find these a lot less from the Confederacy because of a shortage of printers. Another type of cover that you might find from the Civil War era is the mourning cover. Now this is really easy to distinguish between other covers because it has a black border. These were used both in the North and the South, and so these could have been letters of sympathy to a family member. Which brings us back to Memorial Day, which was first nationally recognized after the war in 1868. There are actually a lot of cities and towns across America that claim that they are the founder of Memorial Day. We are lucky enough to have a town with one of the stronger claims here in our backyard. So we're going to Bullsburg to meet with Barbara Gugnano, She's a docent for the Bullsburg Heritage Museum, and she's going to show us around and tell us all about the origins of Bullsburg's Memorial Day. Bullsburg has a very unique history. As a village, Bullsburg was started in 1809. And at that point, it was called Springfield because there were so many springs in the area. It kind of stayed in place for a while. It just was frozen in time. This was kind of on the way between Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. And the village grew up around that. They developed their own craftspeople besides farmers. They had shoemakers. They had blacksmiths, all different types of craftspeople that they could be a sustaining village. By the time the Civil War started, Bullsburg had grown up to be a very thriving village. They had one-room schoolrooms, but they also had an academy. In 1862, when President Lincoln called for more soldiers to join the Union Army, Professor Patterson told his students, I'm going to join so the academy is closing. And I would like all of you young men who are available and willing to fight for your country to join me when I muster up. Several men from the village joined, including Daniel Keller. And his sister, Sophie, was very upset that he joined. And her friend, Emma Hunter, her father was a physician. And he also joined. I would say from the amount of soldiers that joined from Bowlesburg, it was about one in every four families had somebody in the Union Army. Emma Hunter's father dies of typhoid. Now, the year prior to that was the Battle of Gettysburg. And one of the first men from Bowlesburg to die in the Battle of Gettysburg was Amos Myers. So shortly after that, 
Emma and Sophie decided they were going to go and put flowers on Dr. Hunter's grave and met up there with Mrs. Myers, who would come to the cemetery to visit her son's grave. But these three women decided that this was something they should do for all the soldiers buried, not just their loved ones. So they went and got more flowers. And then they decided that that's something they should do, not just then, but every year. After the war, it became a community-wide celebration. Knowing that history of the whole community working together, and then watching how it comes together for Memorial Day weekend, because it involves so many different groups, it's the whole community working together to get the show on the road, <laughs> so to speak, and it is quite a show. So I would encourage everybody to come here for Memorial Day.